Jake from JK Guitars, and this is week two of the Behind the Workshop blog, or whatever I've called it. Um, so last week I was talking about getting two guitars ready for a guitar show happening at the end of October. Um, as you can tell by the state of these guitars on the bench, that was not achievable. <laughs> Basically, uh, completely misshot my schedule um, while I was trying to figure out the timing of it. I actually forgot to include finishing in the whole process. Um, so completely missed the, missed the mark. Um, and then I was doing some long shifts, but didn't want to rush rush these to get them done because otherwise they're gonna I'm gonna let things slide, which I wouldn't normally do, or you know it wouldn't be 100%, and I wouldn't be happy with displaying things that weren't as good as I could do them. So I decided to call them off. Um, I'm taking two others instead. I'm taking a Adirondack and Honduras Rosewood 485, and an All Mahogany 485. So they should be good guitars to demo anyway. So the reason they took a lot more longer than I expected, the additional bevels, these were the first time I was doing these kind of slimline bevels. So they run quite a lot longer, but they're only about a centimeter deep. Um, so working out that process took a bit more time than I expected. And then the belly bevel here, that wasn't too bad, thankfully, um, without the purpling on the back and to tie in, it was actually quite a simple process. So that was okay. Um, Carving the Wenge necks and carving Indian rosewood necks is a nightmare. They're much harder, denser wood than mahogany's. Um, and especially on Wenge, it almost feels like your tools skate across it. They don't really grab properly. And then if you grab too much, uh, Wenge has a chance of splitting quite easily. So you get these long um, splintery barbs that can come off. So you need to be quite careful when carving Wenge. Once it's all in one piece, there's no threat to the player. Um, but when working on it, it is a bit of a bugger. It's a hard one to work on. Another thing I decided to do, um, because I didn't have enough work already, was instead of a volute on the back of this headstock, it would be to have the head veneer, back head veneer, bleed into the back of the, the neck. There's a term for this, but it's, it's escaped me for the time being. But then this kind of ties in, it's a little bit more structural, but I'll, that's not really the main reason, it's more of a kind of aesthetic thing. Um, and the idea was to have that color back head veneer tie into the back of the Indian Rosewood neck, um, and it should look really neat once once it's got a bit of finish on. And in the sunshine, there's a real nice colors between the dark Indian rosewood and that golden honeyed color. Should be really good. So in these videos, I'm going to talk about the sort of things that went well in the week and also any issues I had. So any other guitar makers watching these can kind of Look out for them when they're doing their own builds um, and so on. So one thing I'll need to do on this body here is where the bevel plate ties in with the purfling. Um, this can all be cut with a router and a jig or a guide. But the difference between the original purfling and the bevel purfling, you've got to cut this piece by hand. It's really quite tricky because um, you really want to get a nice smooth curve transition between the original purfling strip and then the bevels purfling strip. So this piece here and then this piece here needs to be cut by hand and you want it to have a real clean smooth flow. Um, it worked perfectly well on the baritone body um, and I got it just right here for the waist but I wasn't very happy with how it turned out here. It has just a bit of a wiggle in it. Um, which you can only really see if you kind of get your eye down at a certain level. Um, but I just decided it wasn't really worth keeping it in or trying to bodge it and make it work properly. Um, so I'm just going to end up replacing the bevel, making it a little bit deeper so everything gets moved forward into the guitar soundboard and I can re inlay the purfling strip and have a nice clean. So one of the rules we had at the um, Bowman Guitar Company, it was amongst the staff, it wasn't written down or anything. Um, but if you had an issue, like say it was a boo-boo or a crack or some, some sort of accident that had happened or some blemish that come up in the wood, um, the rule was if it takes you longer than 15 seconds to figure out a solution for it, then it should be scrapped and replaced. Because um, at the end of the day, if you're spending more time than 15 seconds trying to figure something out, then there's a bigger chance that you're trying to, uh, trying to bodge it, trying to, trying to wangle it through when it shouldn't be going through. Um, and then you'd actually end up spending more time uh, trying to fix it instead of just replacing the entire item. So that could be, say, a binding 
Maybe the join wasn't very good at the butt joint. Replace the binding. Don't try and shimmy the shimmy the gap. Make it close up. Just replace the binding. Um, let's say cedar tops. They're notorious for having pitch pockets. These little dark marks. Um, sometimes they're only about half a mil deep, so you can sand through them and they will come out okay. But sometimes there were too many, and then instead of trying to sand in certain areas to remove the pitch pockets, just replace the top. It'll make a better product at the end of the day. Um, same goes for any kind of joints or um, anything you can kind of add on to or replace. So for example, rosettes, if the rosette wasn't very clean, just replace the rosette, make it a little bit wider and redo the whole thing. Um, but at the end of the day, you can lose a lot of time trying to fix these little things instead of spending 20 minutes replacing a binding, you can spend 25 minutes trying to fix a butt joint, but then it will still look a bit naff and then you'll probably end up having to replace the binding anyway. Um, one of the things I did a lot when I started myself, um, one of the things I use this rule on a lot is always when I'm cutting nut slots on nuts. Um, the number of times I would get to the sixth string and just file one swipe too much and it would take the nut slot down too low and then it will buzz. Um, so instead of trying to pack the slot with dust and super glue and bring it back up or trying to shim underneath the nut to bring everything else up and file the five high ones down. It was just it was just decided amongst myself, just bin it. You, you've nucked it up, you've mucked it up, uh, make a new one and you'll be happier with the end result. You won't be you know, sending it out going, oh, is that gonna come back in a few weeks time, a few months time, um, if, it, if, it, if the problem arises again. So I think it's a good rule to keep. Um, I try and keep it in my own work as much as possible. So um, it just helps keep the, the standards high. I want only the best to go out. Um, so that's why I have to take the time that I do. So with these two guitars, uh, the baritone, like I said, it's come along very nicely. So the neck is on, um, Wenge neck. It still has a good kind of balance before the tuners go on. Obviously the tuners will add a bit more weight to the headstock. But the brass inserts into the tailpiece has really helped keep it bottom heavy. So it's not gonna neck dive when you end up playing it. Um, and then the sound port here, that's a really good access point. So you can see inside the guitar, see all the hard work that's gone on in there. And even though it's only been kind of rough sanded just to clean it up, um, but even while I was working it, the Wenge and this cedar top are a fantastic combination. They sound so musical already. There's just a lot of um, a lot of resonance and a lot of good kind of low overtones going on into it. And of course, once you get the belly bevel keeping it comfortable there, the armrest bevel keeping it comfortable there, and then the sound port hitting you straight in the face while you're playing, um, it should be a real powerhouse once it gets strings on. Um, I also think I'll be doing a epoxy grain fill on this guitar. I haven't used it before um, for any of the guitars I finished previously, but because Wenge is so open poured, it'll be a good guitar to experiment that on. Um, so hopefully uh, it will give a much smoother uniform finish when the oil finish gets applied. Um, while well, I'll be keeping the Injun Rosewood natural, so you'll still have that open grain look that comes with an oil and wax finish. Um, so there would be two different kind of approaches to finishing really, but hopefully once I get back from the show in London, I'll be able to approach these next week. Um, so the first thing to do next week will be to radius and fret the fingerboard uh, and replace this bevel, get a new one on, make, that sure, make sure that's all nice. Uh, the next ready to go on it as soon as this is done. Um, and then they'll be at kind of the same stage again. So I'm hoping to get the finishing of this done by uh, the next time you see another one of these videos. So the guitar show is at the Kempton Race Course, uh, which is in London, South West London. Um, so it's 14 pounds on the door for the tickets. And then if I see you there, I'll be giving out a voucher, discount voucher for new builds. So it's more than worth your while to pop down and say hello. And like I said, there'll be a Adirondack and Honduran Rosewood guitar and a all mahogany guitar as well. And they will be at the old pricing scheme, the 2022 pricing. So they'll be able to get a good deal on those as well. Um, so great. Uh, 
Let me know if you have any questions or queries about these builds or any of the topics I've talked about. Um, and I'll try and get these videos out uh, once a week or so. And hopefully next week I can include some footage of the show. See you behind the scenes of that. Well, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.